and welcome to La Sea de Gel, Northern Spain. It's time for the World Cup Final 2017, the fifth and final slalom stage on the ICF Tour. 260 athletes from 36 countries have been competing on this mythical course. Why is it mythical? Well, it's where the 1992 Barcelona Olympics took place. C2 men, the final. The French are here in strength. The Hochschorners, three times Olympic champions, didn't quite make the grade, as the Scantars, present Olympic champions, again missed the medals. Berling and Becker, they were the top Germans and have been this season. 10th in Prague, 1st in Augsburg, 3rd in Markelberg and 2nd last week in the Ivrea section of the World Cups. Last week they broke a paddle but this week they've gone to the manufacturers and made sure everything is correct. Coming down the up 20, 6 upstreams on this very challenging tricky course and they're negotiating it very smoothly today. That is how to negotiate an upstream. You use the water speed, punt off against the wall. This last section, about 25 meters, when the hands are absolutely exhausted, but they put in a super time. And the other athletes who've been before them in the final know when something good is happening. David Schroeder, Nico Betke, both extremely accomplished C1 paddlers. They've only been together fairly recently in a pair, but that doesn't show. The trick is to understand what your partner's doing and make his job easy. The first stagger sequence was followed by an upstream. And again, using the water. This course is known to be shallow and narrow. Maybe it doesn't look like it, but it's 100% artificial, built in 1991 and designed by the great Andre Chibak, who also designed the Liptovsky course in Slovakia. There's been a few changes in the last year. Some of the big rocks have been moved around, so athletes said they really had to study it, but that it's a residential fixture on the World Cup scene. Most athletes know it. And by the way, in 2019, the World Championship's going to be here. Schroeder Betke really putting a fine performance in today exactly a second behind first place. Absolutely exhausted. It's 300 meters long, this course. Berling Becker take the gold. Schroeder Betge take the silver, both for Germany and Klaus Pesch for France take the bronze. World Cup standings. Berling Becker win by a fraction from Kasper Sindler. Um, well, we didn't really have a very good start to the season with 8th place in the Europeans and 10th place in Prague. But then, we're on every podium in the rest of the World Cups. So we're really looking forward to the Worlds. Changing classes, the C1 women, 48 entries. These are the final 10. We're going to look at the top athletes. Nadine Wojcznik from Austria, junior world champion. Fourth twice this season on the World Cup Tour. She's known to be very powerful, dynamic, and has a great feel for the water. So these athletes are kneeling down. As you can see, it's a single-bladed paddle. Their center of gravity is quite high, which means they can really reach forward. The trick is to keep the boat flat and also keep the paddle in the water, not only as a rudder, but as a force to move the boat forward as much as possible. It's not a problem going a little bit low because that's where the fast water is. 
of course, the upstreams, six of them, are really put in the eddies where the water is a little bit less moving. You can punt off the side, maybe losing a second or so. And then we saw gate 13, she lost a two second or had a two second penalty. Comes over and goes into provisional first place. Kimberly Woods, the European champion in the little picture, admiring. Now, Nuria Villarubla, born and bred in La Seda Gel. When you walk with her to her apartment, she stops to speak to absolutely everyone. The local hero won in 2016 here. Has a real feel for this water. If you watch closely, she actually often takes a longer line than the other athletes. And that's because she knows exactly where the fast water's flowing. We saw in the split, she's over two seconds up. This is the big drop. And look how deep she's going, but the water is projecting her up. And that's the trick. Switching here, which most of the female athletes do. We saw Nadine, however, last to go, doesn't switch at all. Big crowd, local Spanish speaker. All she needs to do is really, it's a difficult last stagger, force the last 10 strokes over the line. And look at that, 4.64 ahead of the field. Now, I knew it wasn't celebrating wildly because Jess Fox has won the last three World Cups and was the next to go from clearly Australia, multiple world champion, also in K1, by the way. She really throws the boat around and really controls exactly where she wants the boat to go. And she's known as possibly the most accomplished switcher on the circuit, but so far, four seconds of penalties. Obviously the first second of third athletes provisionally are watching and encouraging. Four second penalties are going to be hard to make up. Needs to keep the boat really moving, a little bit stuttering if you're going to be hypercritical. Coming forward and no, there's a clumsy penalty. Six seconds of penalties, where will she come? Well, second place. Nuevo Villarreal, goal for Spain. Jess Fox, silver for Australia, and Nadine Wojcik takes the bronze for Austria. This season has been 50-50, sometimes low, sometimes high, emotionally, physically, but finally, I'm happy to arrive at the end of the season, looking to the world with ambition and feeling me strong. Standings, Jess Fox. Well, look at that massive lead in the World Cup standings. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was a, a tough start in Prague. I didn't make the final, but I think I bounced back quite well in, in Augsburg and Leipzig um, with two wins. And then last week in Ibrea, it was probably my best run ever. So um, I'm, I'm very happy. I am David Ford. I'm a former world champion and five-time Olympian, paddle for Canada on my last few races on the World Cup circuit. Why kayaking for me? I was just an active kid, and when my parents took me to the river, I think I found a, a calling, a home. I, I, I'm not sure I fit in the way a lot of people do, and so it gave me something that just I was good at. I started paddling when I was eight, made the national team at 15, and I've been doing it ever since. So and it really is just kind of that finding your calling that's kind of been my career. In 99, winning the World Championships, it's, it's something I was told a Canadian would never be able to do. Now it's more about enjoying the sport. Now with the boats being even shorter, it's become very dynamic, very reactionary, a lot of intuitive feeling on the water. You go at the gates and then you just deal with it. It's a big difference from when I started where you were crafting your runs stroke for stroke. I think this is my last tour as an athlete. I took a year out of the boat, didn't take a single stroke, and I think that left me wanting a little bit. And so when I had the opportunity to come and race a little bit more, having Seo as one of the stops, having Poe being, I think, what's gonna be a very special World Championships, brought me back, and I think I'm happy to retire now. But maybe if I can stay in the sport and share some of the experience I've had, it would be really fun to kind of help mold maybe the next generation of athletes. K1 men, start list. 
Natalie Seacrest and Mark Vicente have been designing this course. They've set a course that isn't too difficult. It's all about the six upstreams. Boris Nevu from France. Half his mind is on Poe at the World Championships in two weeks' time. The other half is definitely here today. He is an absolute cool cucumber flyer. He's a 2014 world champion. And if you're in the top two or three in France, you know you're fast. Always at ease with himself. Sebastian Schubert in the picture. Was down earlier and is provisional leader, but Boris Nevu is making light work of this. In the semi-finals, the top 14 boats went clear. All he needs to do is keep on the pace. It's been a faultless run so far. Well, 2.29 seconds, and he knows he's put up good performance, but there are some flyers to go. Peter Kauser, double world champion and recent Olympic silver medalist. Been on the scene many, many years. In fact, the oldest athlete in this competition, but look how he just tells his boat where to go, what to do and how to do it. Took a medal in Italy last week, so we'll have confidence. Slightly down at the first split, but really knows how to move the boat. Keeps a wide angle into this up. That's how to do it. You need to have the whole of your head and part of your boat through at the same time. And doesn't lose any speed at all. This exceptional run from Peter Kauser from Slovenia. The others can only look on and admire. Oh, he's taken the lead by four hundredths of a second. Yuri Priskovic, his father, top coach, is also called Yuri Priskovic. Yuri Priskovic in the picture is the incumbent world champion. Let's see, he performs today, always gives it 100%. Skipped Ivrea last weekend to concentrate in Poe on some extra training and is eight tenths of a second up at the first split. Peter Kauser looking on concerned. This is where it's all won and lost. That's very fast. At this level, there's really not much between the top 10 athletes. Maybe being stuck a little bit there. Two second penalties, that's going to really hurt. Kauza knows it. And with that two second penalty, Yuri Priskovic will take third place. Peter Kauser, girl for Slovenia. Boris Nevu, France takes the silver. And Yuri Priskovic for the Czech Republic takes the bronze. Thank you for all the congratulations. The competition was really intense. I knew I could get some time back on the bottom part of the course. I was doing as I wanted to and I'm extremely happy with my performance. Here at this place I won my first major competition and now this is the 10th. I'm so happy. Standings, Viprindus, Schubert, Peter Kauser. So Viprindus with three wins this season is the top man. Of course, I'm super happy with my results. I won three or five World Cups. This season so far has been really good and now I have mixed feelings. Sometimes I'm really satisfied. A Czech person has never won the overall standings before. Other times I'm just super happy. I don't know exactly the feeling. In a few days or a few minutes I'll just be completely blown away with it all. Extreme kayak. Four men in a line. The first one over the finish is the winner. You push your competitor out the way. Round the upstreams. An Eskimo turn within a specific time period. And then charging to the finish for the second week in a row, Hannes Egner from Germany is the champion. Mike Dawson second and Pedro de Silva third. Congratulations to all the athletes that took part in this really dynamic event. 
Same rules for the women. Hilgatova, Mukalevo, Wegman, and Prejean made the final. Crucially, to be starting fast. Jimmy Prejean, Martina Wegman, always have a battle. You can take either side of the reds. Often, this is where the crucial victories come, but Martina Wegman has won before and takes the really well deserved victory. So, Martina Wegman from the Netherlands, Camille Prangeon, Paulina Mogoliva take the medals with the overall standings as you can see. So, women's K1 final, packed with former world champions. Jess Fox, well, we saw her in the C1. That was the day before, so the weather conditions slightly changed. Here we have sunshine, and there's been a bit of a breeze. On the World Cup tour, she hasn't won this year yet, which is very rare, a couple of seconds. She, of course, is the reigning under-23 world champion. Has a real good feel for the water. Knows exactly where she wants to put the boat and was slightly up on the split. Has such a reputation now that all the other athletes are a little bit in awe of what she does. Well, of course, apart from Ricardo Funk. Ducking the head. She's had a few challenges with penalties this season so far, but that looked clean. Knows the course very well because she's had several runs down with the C1. The final is another situation with all the stress, but she pushes as much as possible. Well, takes a provisional lead. 3.93 seconds from the best. There's still athletes to go. Mylin Shaw, local favourite. In between the semi-final and the final, she damaged her boat. It's often the case here in Seo because the water is very shallow. Spend a bit of time correcting it. The Olympic champion won here last year and is a very powerful athlete. Clearly knows the angles. As you can see, always keeps in the fast water. There are hundreds of combinations of gates that can be set. The course designers try to set a fair pattern and today it looks like they've succeeded. No huge challenges, apart from perhaps this is the up 20. Oh, there's a two second penalty. She did that a couple of years ago. But she's so fast, can she pull it back? Mind you, one in Prague this year, skipped a couple of World Cups for the Po preparations. And as you can hear in the background, maybe hundreds of Spaniards are cheering her on. Running both sides of the channel and just into second place. Jess Fox holds on. However, Ricky Funk, what can you say? Well, she's good. She's won three World Cups so far this season. And the other was on the podium. Very, very lightweight. However, the boat is always, always moving in the right direction. Keeps impeccable power. Often takes two seconds or four seconds of penalty. And here, slightly down. Great determination. And also, crucially, great confidence. Really using the water. Ricky Funk, desperately upset not to make the Olympics. However, this season, 2017, she's really made it her own so far. Five World Cups. She's won three. What's going to happen in the final? Well, she wins another. That's unprecedented. Four victories in the World Cup for Germany's Ricky Funk. Second, Des Fox from Australia. And third, Miley Shuro from Spain. And of course, the World Cup standings. Ricardo Funk takes the top spot from Jess Fox and Jana Dukatova. That's the ninth year in a row Dukatova's been in the medals. What do you do just before you start? My uh, pre-race superstition is just playing around with my wristband, making sure it's nice and comfortable. 
uh, pre-race, they make sure that I'm smiling on the start line, get the endorphins released and get ready for a good run. I do the same thing every race. I pray, I splash myself in the face with water, and then blow it out and go racing. My pre-race superstition is just having heavy, deep breaths. To be in a positive mood, I always smile before my start. Um, I just uh, look around, enjoy, enjoy the moment. And then I take my paddle and I try to activate myself like this. So I'm like this for five seconds. <laughs> uh, when I'm in the start, I usually try to check my spray deck because there's been some times where it's come off. So I make sure that it's on well. I try to have a clear head and uh, keep focus on the race. Before the start, I always touch the water because it gives me some energy and some power and I feel it when the water is cold, it's good for ac activating myself. I normally just check my decks on properly, check my buoyancy is done up, check my helmet sitting right and then focus on the, the first move or just the first couple of gates that i got to do well. Say so the lineup for the C1. In fact, there's 11 competitors this because the 10th position was shared. Alexander Slavkowski, European champion. Been on the scene many, many years now from Liptowski where in fact his father was the former mayor. He's known for caressing the water with extreme power, very long angles. And the only Slovakia to make the final, which is so rare. Martikan and Mati Benes both make the semis, but missed out today. Well, three seconds up. This is how to perform at the level, really taking the right angles and using the water. Difficult last section here. Oh no, that's going to cost him two seconds on the inside with his shoulder. Doesn't matter where you touch, if you touch, it's a two second punting off the wall. Needs to keep in the current. Putting down a really super run here. Well, 1.3 seconds faster than Ryan Wesley, who we saw in the picture. Martin Thomas from France, the only French representative in the final, with Denis Gaga Chenu, the Olympic champion, just missing out today. However, he thinks that Poe might be a different game altogether. It's the home of Tony Estange, who won three Olympic golds. Martin being putting together some really, really top performances, one second out of the pace. Really ducking and diving. Coming to the crucial stage. And negotiates on his crossbow. Shows what power and control he actually does have. Perfect weather conditions. 30 meters to go. This is quite a difficult stagger when you're tired. Again on the crossbow, slicing through the water. And moves into provisional. Second place, Benny or Benjamin Savchek from the huge Tatsen course. So this is a completely different waterway here. He's always been known as being incredibly fast until a couple of years ago. He used to take too many risks in the sense of he used to always hit three or four pails. Last year, really held it together, taking no risk at all, as you can see, going right through the middle of the poles. And this is looking good. Always gives it 100%. And Benny Savsek is having the race of his life. Really needs to use all his energy to go through the end of this 300 meter course. And just takes the victory. So, Benny Savsek, gold medal for Slovenia, Alexander Sarkowski, silver Slovakian, Marta Toma, takes the bronze for France. Yeah, blow, yeah it was blow, really hard. I was pushing as much blow, as possible, uh, trying not to touch the gates. In, uh, and I made it to the finish, the not so smooth like in the uh, semi-finals, but I didn't do any touches, so I'm really happy to stand on the first place at the podium. So, Sidus Tassiadis takes the overall standings, Savsek second and Slikowski third. 
Um, I like to keep this way to do lots and lots of training before the World Championships. It's really important to me to progress and clearly that will mean to have good results. To show everyone that I'm a really good paddler this year and of course that I'm able to win a medal in Po is a huge priority. Well, we'll see what happens. I'd like to keep to have fun, to be happy about what I'm doing, and to continue in this sport I love. Well, that's it from Lesede Gel for the 2017 World Cup Finals. I hope you've enjoyed it. See you soon.